Welcome back to Rave Green TV, and this is going to be your guys' post-match review of RSL 1, our beloved Seattle Sounders nil. The Seattle Sounders are now sitting in last place in the Western Conference with no goals scored, no wins, and two losses and two goals conceded, and this is a very, very disappointing start to the season for the Sounders, and this is not how we wanted to hope to start this season. After how disappointing the end of last season went, we've dragged on that form into the start of this season. I mentioned it in the post-match review after the Nashville game, how it's been since October of last season, the Seattle Sounders haven't won nor scored a goal from open play, and the streak continues after tonight's result. So where do the Sounders go from here? What are my thoughts on it? It's just, it's sad, and, it, and again, it's in another embarrassing result. I know a lot of people would say this again wouldn't be considered embarrassing. It is embarrassing, and maybe some people also would say, well, we're a slow start team. We're starting off the season slow. It matters how we do at the end, but we can't be thinking about the future when the here and now we're not good. We cannot be banking on ourselves to be insane at the end of the season. Yes, what really does matter, this is a fact, is how we do at the end of the season. But we don't know what's going to happen at the end of the season if we're not setting ourselves up at least remotely for success. And it's actually not true that the Sounders are a second half season team. This trend really just started in 2016 where we had that iconic push, where we did have arguably, or actually, it wasn't even arguably statistically our worst start ever to an MLS season then we pushed on at the end of that season that ended up winning MLS Cup then the same thing did happen again in 2017 and again someone in 2018 but in general we're not a slow starting team ever since we came into the league in 09 up to 2016 we always start off the seasons actually really well or like decently we never like were absolutely terrible but we were always in that top four or five maybe even in the first in the standings mix in the Western Conference we never were ever below that bottom half of the playoff spot up to that like 2016, 2017, 2018 seasons where we did have that slow start and then really kicked on in the second half. This game against RSL was a must win game for the Sounders because of our loss against Nashville on the opening day. If we drew that game, yes, we could have came out with another draw in this game, but we've now lost both of our games so far this season. And both of them were matches where we could have at minimum gone a point in, but we're going empty handed in both of them. I think it's a combination of things on why we haven't been good and why we haven't been playing well. Part of it is Brian Schmetzer due to his squad selection, you know, and Brian loves playing hard in these CONCACAF competitions as we saw in the League's Cup. He's mentioned his press conferences. He really wants to make a push. He thinks it's a myth that teams can't do well in CCL and in the MLS, but we're at, he's proving himself wrong based off of the results we've been having in MLS this season. And another part of it is our business in the offseason. The only player we brought in was Albert Rusnak, and funnily enough, it was RSL's best player, and we played them today and they didn't have their arguably their best player and they still beat us we took away their king in the chessboard but yet they still were able to beat us without their king that's absolutely crazy to see how that just happened but in regards to what i was talking about in the offseason we sold the likes of shane o'neill brad smith and we didn't replace we only player as i said we bought was albert rusnak but we didn't buy a single defender and what i mean by that is we need at least a defender somewhere in the back line a left back a center back or right back i think more specifically we did need a right back because outside of alex rodon we don't have actually any right backs in this team. We didn't add any depth in that position. Yes, you could also say that we do have the youngsters, but then we're going to be having a lot of these games like today where the youngsters are costing us. The clearest chance we had in today's game fell to Reed Baker Whiting. And yet again, and I will say yet again, because if you think about the game last season against San Jose, he hits it with this purse. And maybe you guys are thinking I am too harsh. He is 16 years old. And yes, I may, yes, he is 16 years old. I won't deny it. He is a youngster, but he's getting clear cut opportunities opportunities and at the end of the day he's wearing the same jersey like everyone else on that field and is playing on the same field as everyone else he is a professional he needs to be doing better Reed has fluffed so many chances like in the Austin game where he got his first ever start the San Jose game last season at home where we lost 1-0 and in today's game where he had the best opportunity and just like in the San Jose game he has hit it with his purse and the youngsters are somewhat costing us in some of these games but that is the risk you take with playing youngsters because they need 
to learn and thus they will hopefully get better through these mistakes. I think the man of the match for tonight is between three players. Stefan Fry, who came up with two clutch saves in this game to keep us in it because if Ruiz actually had his shooting boots on for RSL, we probably should have lost this game 2-0 comfortably. But Stefan Fry made two clutch saves. Reagan, with his first ever start at center back, I thought actually played really well. It didn't look like he had any nerves whatsoever in this game. And the Sounders go Freddie Montero, who was our really our only shining light in this game offensively. He popped a couple of shots from distance and probably brought the hardest save out of McMath in this game late on with that long distance shot that almost crept in because of how well he hit that. And we all know Freddie can shoot the ball from distance. The risk Brian is taking with rotating players and thinking about Champions League games is costing us. And I want him to actually have more of a mindset of we should be thinking about this game more than thinking about our future game on Tuesday. This game should be the one we should be trying to win. And you could tell that he was thinking about Tuesday's game based off of the subs that we made. We basically switched out our system come the start of the second half. And that's what cost us because right from the start of the second half, that's when Bobby Wood scored. We gave him that easy opportunity because most of the players that came on were not settled in because Brian was thinking about the game against Leon on Tuesday. Then the other part of his mistake was he subbed out Liao Chu, who yes, he didn't have an amazing start like we would have all hoped for because it was his first start in the Sounders jersey, but he subbed him out over Reed Baker Whiting for Jordan Morris, where I feel like this was a game where you needed Liao Chu on one side, Freddie Montero in the middle, and Jordan Morris on the other side, because I feel like Reed was the one that was struggling the most out of this front line in today's game. But is it either for Chu isn't ready to play 90 minutes, or he's going to play him in Lyon, make him have a big part play in that game? I don't know, but Reed was the guy that needed to get subbed off, and that was extremely poor decision making on Brian's part to make that sub, in my opinion, because I would have loved to have seen Liao Chu, Freddie Montero, Jordan Morris. I don't think Real Salt Lake would have been able to cope with those three, and we probably could have gone a goal seeing that front line against that defense. I'm assuming it's for the Lyon game, so Chu's going to play a big part in the first leg of that match on Tuesday, but the Sounders are in a hole now. Bottom of the Western Conference, terrible start to the season, and I'll even throw that out there. The weather delay was probably another big part of why the Sounders did play poorly, but I don't feel like it's a valid excuse because both teams had to face with the weather delay. Yes, you could say RSL deals with this more often, but still, it, we're both dealing with the same issues, so I don't feel like it's a valid excuse one bit. I think Brian and Garth need to have a serious conversation about bringing in another defender, someone that can play anywhere in the back line. I don't care which position you get, but an experienced defender that will help within the depth of the squad because Kellen Rowe can't be playing outside back. I'm not saying it's his fault, but he can't do it. I respect Kellen for trying to be that rotational guy to play in those positions, but it's just it's not working and we need another offensive player because these games where we don't have Raul Ruiz Diaz is killing us and we need someone with that cutting edge I'm not saying it has to be Raul's quality but maybe like a Liao Chu that Brian trusts and will actually play more often in our offensive half because these games are killing us because we have a lack of big player depth in the offensive positions because again our excuse most likely people will say is that we didn't have Raul Ruiz Diaz that is why if you're going to make a push in the CCL and in the MLS, you need to build depth in these positions. And we didn't buy anyone offensively outside of Rusnak, who's more of like a 10 or an 8, you could say. It's just frustrating. I feel like we really needed a winger, a really pacey winger that can absolutely make a big difference in games. That's the position I've been crying out for for a couple of seasons. Yes, we got Liao Chu, who is technically that guy, but Brian doesn't trust him enough. He has not played nearly as many minutes as he should have, and that is just disappointing to see. I don't know, guys. There's a lot of things to talk about after today's game. These are just some of the things that came off the dome for me and my thoughts of today's game. Lyon is the next upcoming game on Tuesday, and we'll make sure to have a preview out for that. I don't know if it'll be a lengthy preview, but probably a short preview discussing that game, and we will be at the game, so make sure to come say hi or be a part of our post-game interviews for that match but let me know in the comments down below who was your guys' man of the match in this game against Real Salt Lake what do you think was our Achilles heel in today's game just let me know all your guys' thoughts on the match in the comments down below like the video if you haven't already subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and I hope you all have a lovely day <laughs>